Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Diane and thank you so much for joining me here today in my home kitchen. I appreciate you all. I want to say a big hearty welcome to all of my new subscribers. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate you and I appreciate all the comments that I've gotten from all of my subscribers and I would it would be a miss if I left out my subscribers that have followed me throughout this journey. Thank you so much and I appreciate you tuning in each and every time. I really, really appreciate you. So we're going to get right into this today. We're going to be making a copycat Wendy's Chili. That's right. A copycat Wendy's Chili. We're going to make it. All right. We're going to just get right on into it. Here we go. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn um, the heat on our pot. I have a large six quart pot um, that we're going to be using today. So we're going to get that to going and get the heat going in that real good. And while we're doing that, we're going to go ahead on and we're going to put in um, some olive oil. You use the oil that you prefer, that you like. And we're going to put in about two tablespoons of olive oil. Okay. And this is, of course, the olive oil that I'm using. Let me turn that around now so you can see it. Okay. Very good. So we're going to let that get hot. And so while my oil is getting hot, I'm going to start um, my onion, my green pepper. And it calls for celery. Now, I've made this recipe a couple of times. Let me go ahead and get my ground beef in there. It's starting to smoke. So, I have two pounds of ground beef. And so, what you want to do with clean hands is you want to go in and you want to just pat it. Be very careful, okay? I'm kind of used to heat and I've been cooking for years. Been burnt I don't know how many times. But you want to press this ground beef down in the bottom of your pot. Do everything in one pot. So I got my ground beef pressed in there real good. It's made a layer. And we're going to let that cook. I got mine cooking on about a nine. Okay, my numbers go from uh, one to ten. And I got it on a nine. And we're going to let it just cook for about 10 minutes and then we're going to stir it up and let it continue to cook. I've so I've turned it down to about an 8 and we're just going to let that cook real good. We're going to start with the onion. So I got a large onion. That's a little difficult for you to see. Let me... There we go. Move the camera around. <laughs> I've got a large onion and a sharp knife, okay? Just one half, and here's the other. You know, chili is considered a comfort food. Let me get that off. And so, it's Thursday, and um, I'm making this chili. for today and tomorrow it's going to be even better. Got my onion. So we're using one full onion. Okay. Then I got a green pepper. I'm going to slice the top off of that. And I'm going to keep that top um, because, of course, I can use that for just any old thing at any time. But we're going to put this whole pepper in here. So we're just going to slice right around um, the ribbon of this pepper. Okay. And you get all of that out because you don't want none of that in there. So it can make it bitter. Okay. Give me a little surface here to chop on. I'm just going to chop it right over 
in there. I must say that having a chopper is a very needful thing, um, I think. But I mean, I, I went years without having one. So if you don't have one, please don't be discouraged that you don't have one. Just use a knife. I mean, that's what my grandma used. She, she never knew anything about a chopper. My grandma did. She just chopped everything by hand, bless her heart. Right, I'm going to get some of this out the way. I'm going to clean up my mess as I go. Alright, and then celery. So I'm going to change my blade. I love this chopper. Someone asked me about it. I did get it on Amazon. And it's just quick and easy. You just slide and you remove the blade. This is the size I use for the onion and the pepper. And then I've got a smaller size for the celery. And we're going to lock it back in place. And we're just going to do, you know, a rough chop. Celery sometimes is a little bit harder to cut. And I think I need to cut it just... I made it a little too long. There we go. So you want to use two stalks of celery in this particular recipe. And then I want to cut this off and there's a little brown spot. Let's just get rid of that. Alrighty. Okay, very good. So there's our our onion and our green pepper and our celery nicely chopped okay but you can use whatever you want you don't have to use uh, the, the green pepper you can use the red but I'm sticking with what the recipe with what the recipe said okay and I was just checking because I don't want my ground beef to burn I've turned it down um, once the temperature got up, I've turned it down to about a five because I've got four minutes left for it to cook. And while it's cooking, I'm going to do some cleanup and then I'll be right back. We're going to start to stir this ground beef. Be careful, it may stick to the pan, which is fine. We kind of want a little sear on it, but we don't want it to burn. Okay, that's the key thing. We do not want it to burn. And sometimes I like to have like a lot of little chunks of meat in my chili. I just love that. But if you don't want the chunks, you go ahead on and you, you thin your meat out if you want to. So we're going to let that continue to cook, okay? Also, I'm using the 93.7 ground beef. So as you can see, there is little to no fat. In fact, it was none. Even the olive oil has kind of absorbed into the meat, which is great. So we're going to let this continue to cook until it's completely done. You don't want any pink in your ground beef, okay? So make sure it's done, even if you... Um, want it chunky. You don't want to have any um, pinkness left in it. Make sure it's done now, okay? Alright, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to give it a good stirring up. Make sure we got it nice and done because this should take probably a, an additional five minutes to cook it after We've let it cook for that eight to ten minutes, so additional five five minutes should seal the deal. Alrighty, that is looking good. So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our onion, our pepper, and our celery, and we're just gonna dump this over in here. I'm dumping all of that. Oh my goodness! I wish you could smell that. Oh. We're just making sure we get all of this out. And then we're just going to spread it on top. And we're going to let it cool about a good five minutes or until it's kind of translucent, okay? Um, midway through, I'll go through and I'll just stir it all up together. I am going to put a top on, the top on it because that will help it to um, cook down a whole lot quicker. 
but to get translucent a whole lot quicker, okay? I'm going to do some more cleaning up and then we'll come back. Okay, so it's been about two minutes. We're going to give it a nice little stir just to get it all stirred up in there, nice and incorporated. Just kind of make sure you scrape the sides down and we're going to continue to let it cook. Now, of course, I have turned my heat down. You have to cook according to the temperature of your stove, how your stove would cook. So if you know it's going to burn or stick on a certain temperature, you don't try to gauge it by mine. Just use how you would normally do for your stove, okay? Okay, so while that is cooking, I'm going to add some um, extra peppers to mine. This is not in the copycat recipe. Um, I'm doing it because, of course, as I've told you before, we like things hot. So my husband went grocery shopping with me and he wanted to put these peppers in it to make it ice, nice and spicy and hot. So we're going to go with the jalapeno and I think this is a habanero pepper, if I said it correctly. He picked them. I don't know, okay? <laughs> so I'm going to go in and I know I should have on gloves. I'll just be very careful and make sure that I do not um, stick my hands near my face because I don't want to get it burnt off. And um, you're just going to chop that with a tiny blade and I'm going to show you how small it is. Teeny tiny. And I dare think that I should put that in. I, I, I normally never use these. I just um, use chili powder, cayenne pepper, cayenne pepper. But he wanted these, so we're going to try these. I've made chili for years, and like I said, I've, I've never used these peppers before. Let me flip it because that's the skin side. Very good. So I think I'm going to stick with that. I got a feeling that as um, as it sits, it'll probably get hotter and hotter. Oh my goodness. <coughs> Y'all. Oh, I didn't get choked. That's how hot it is. Yeah, I'm not going to chop anymore. That's probably really, really good. I'll save it for something else and make it for him. Maybe put it in his eggs or something. <laughs> I think he'll love that. But I know where the heat is also in these seeds. <coughs> I'm going to drink some water and I'll be back. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to give this another good stir, and my onions are looking nice and translucent. So we're going to start putting in our next ingredients. Alrighty, so, so next we're going to put in two 14 ounce cans of stewed tomatoes. Okay, get those opened up, and I'm actually going to turn my heat up because it'll bring it the temperature down. I'm just opening the cans up. I've washed my tops. We're going to pour those tomatoes right in there and we're going to give them a little chopping right in the pan. Okay. This is my second can of stewed tomatoes. And we're going to just chop these up, just roughly go in there, kind of chop them up, okay? They will, of course, chop up or stew down some more and kind of start to fall apart, but um, you want to go in and kind of break them up a little bit. You don't want hunks. If you can find um, the already diced stewed tomatoes, of course, you use that, but I am never able to find the ones that are already chopped. <clears throat> but this is fine. This works absolutely great. 
You don't have to do a great deal of chopping. All right, that is looking good to me. Next, we're going to put in a 14 or 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. And I've got the one that has no salt added to it. And we're just going to pour that right in there. And next, we're going to put in a 10 ounce can of Rotel. And I got the one that has no salt added to it, but it has. Uh, of course diced tomatoes and I got the one with the green chilies in it okay they make uh, different kinds so you know get which one you want whichever one you like and then we're just gonna add that can over into it and then we're gonna give it a nice stir get it all stirred in there real good if you see any hunks of tomato of course this would be the time for you to go ahead on and kind of dice it up a little bit with your spoon. So that is looking good. We're not, not going to waste any time. We're going to put in one whole cup of water. Just stir, stir, stir. Alright, next we're going to put in our chili seasoning. If I don't feel like making my own chili seasoning, I would just buy the packs. But today, I'm going to make my own little chili seasoning to go in it, okay? Mm, Y'all, that's looking good. So it starts out with one tablespoon of chili powder. And I have taken all of my little, um, um, I guess you call them, um, the little shakers that's, yes, I've taken them all off because I usually measure stuff or just dump it, you know, I mean, that's just what I do. Um, so I've taken them all off of my containers or my spices. And then we're going to put in one teaspoon of cumin, get that top off. One teaspoon of cumin goes in here. And the next thing is we're going to put in garlic. Powdered garlic. And we're going to give that a shake. And we're going to put in one teaspoon of that. One teaspoon of garlic. Mm -hmm. And the next thing is salt. We're going to put in a teaspoon of salt. And then we have onion powder. We're going to put in a teaspoon of onion powder. And then oregano. And we're going to put in a half a teaspoon of oregano. Then we have black pepper. I have the coarse black pepper. And we're going to put in a fourth a teaspoon of black pepper. Let me stir this. Yum, yum, yum. And then we're going to put in some cayenne pepper. We're going to go in with a fourth teaspoon of that. Let's give this a nice stir. Next, we're going to put in a can of kidney beans. We're going to leave the juice in the can. And we're going to put our kidney beans in there. And next, we're going to add pinto beans. I prefer this brand. Be careful because they have some that have onions in it. And then they have some, um, they have this kind, of course. So be careful, make sure you get the kind that does not have the onions in it. Um, so just make sure you get the right kind. And we're going to leave the juice also um, in this. And we're going to add our beans in and give it a stir. So now at this point what we're going to do is we're going to turn our heat up and we want to bring it to a, a boil, okay? It's looking good, ain't it? <laughs> I know. All right, I'm gonna go out on a limb with this. I 
kind of feel like I don't want to put as much in it as I chopped up. I can always save it. Uh, but we do like hot stuff. I want to be able to not eat it. So if you use peppers, just be careful. Um, but like I say, take the shortcut if you can or if you want to. And just buy whatever pack of chili seasoning you normally use. But you're going to need two for this copycat recipe. But that's looking good. So we're going to let it come to a boil. And we're going to, after it comes to a boil, we're going to cover it up. Let it simmer for an hour. And then it's going to be ready to eat. And I want to just push all of my ingredients down in here. So I'm actually scraping the bowl, the pan down. We're going to let it come to a boil. Alright, we're at that boil point. I'm going to turn mine down to simmer. Wherever you need to be at, uh, will simmer on your stove. That's where you will put it. I'm breaking up some of these tomatoes just a little bit more. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to cover it. We're going to let it continue to cook. Set your timer for an hour. Okay, so we're at about the halfway mark. It's been cooking for 30 minutes or simmering for 30 minutes. And I'm going to go in and give it a stir. And that is looking really good, y'all. Really, really good. Okay, we're going to let it continue for the um, other 30 minutes and then we're going to get ready to eat. I'll be right back with you. Alrighty, so our hour is up. I'm going to take the top off of it, give it a nice stir. And we are actually ready to put in our last ingredient. So, the last ingredient is one tablespoon of white vinegar. I don't have any. I used all what I had. I've got this, and this is what I'm going to put in it. So we're going to put this in at the very end. We're going to give it a nice good stir. a look over in there and turn my heat off. Okay family, this is what it looks like up close. Yum, yum, yum. We are going to enjoy this. I'm going to plate some up and we're going to get ready to eat. Alrighty, we're going to go ahead and get some in the bowl here. I'll show you up close. Oh my goodness. Got some oyster crackers. Well, I just want to thank you so much for joining me here today. Remember to like, to share, and to subscribe to my channel. Be blessed, and we'll see you real, real soon. Zoom in even more so you can see it.